Here we have a, a sea spray with a lot of the typical improvements that we're covering in these videos. As you can see, it's a fairly lively sailing boat. Um, easy, easy, easy to handle the controls and uh, uh, very responsive to where you sit in the boat. Um, uh, very responsive to any steering that you do and it's very balanced. Um, easy to handle, easy lightweight boat to get in the water from shore and launch and get going. Hi, I wanted to explain uh, Okanagan steering. This was developed at, uh, new, at the uh, Asoya Sailing Club in BC. Other systems are non-typical. This is uh, bolt bimini tubing, it's aluminum. Uh, the dimensions for the different size of tubing that you can get from a canvas store or a bolt bimini uh, store, a, a shop that manufactures biminis and that kind of thing will, will carry this tubing. The nice thing is it fits from one dimension to the larger size. It fits very smoothly inside and there's no slop or a play. Uh, these adjustments allow uh, to make your uh, rudder blades parallel and um, we've got a bend in here to kind of cor uh, correlate with the different changing angles of, of your turning so the one uh, rudder blade will turn a little more sharper than the other one. The other uh, thing here is this uh, jaw slide and this is an eye end this is a jaw slide this is adjustable so there's a set screw here that you can loosen and you can move this along here to adjust the rudder blades so that they're parallel it's important to make sure your rudder blades are in the fully down position and not swept back if you have a problem with the rudders swept back uh, they will cause quite a bit of weather helm if they're not in the fully down position and you could run the risk of breaking them so ensure that your blades are fully down and that you've, your cleats aren't slipping uh, to ensure safe use. Um, we use that system for the tiller stick as well. So it rotates up, up and down and forward and back. And it'd be nice to have a, a lighter weight tiller stick, but in this case, the aluminum bolt bimini tubing is just fine. So. This is a huge advantage. The sea spray is very weight sensitive, so you want to ride or sail your boat as much as you can with the transoms as high up or uh, not down low in the water like this, but you know maybe here or somewhere, so you don't you're not you're, you're losing a lot of your uh, drive, you know, through uh, suction here. So okay, basically, you want to displace the water and bring it back together at the tail end of the boat. Displace it at the front bring it back together at the tail end of the boat. So typically we tend to sail sitting fairly far forward. Uh, and then if the winds pick up, then you gradually start moving back. And if you're going downwind and it's really howling, uh, you might be all the way back here, even have your, you know, your leg or your feet tucked under here and get your weight as far back so that that bow up there, the lee bow won't uh, bury into the water and uh, do pitch pulls. Sea sprays don't typically pitch pull, but they will drive down into the water and stop and reverse. And sometimes they capsize, but um, if you're careful, that won't happen. What else can I tell you? These are laminate sails. Uh, they're made by North. North isn't building uh, sea spray sails at the moment, but you could check with them if you wanted to uh, look at a new set of sails. These are... Um, pretty good shape yet on this particular sail. I had to tighten the leech up. It had a bit of motor boating uh, here, so I had to cut some very fine V's in it and then re-sew it back together. And uh, that seemed to clear that mess up. Leach and McBride now make our sails and we've had good luck with that company. They're out of uh, Victoria, BC. They have made both sock sail main and halyard mains and uh, both seem to be in, of good quality and these are also laminate type sails so roll them up. Sailrite also offers kits for main and jib halyard sails for sea spray and you could check with them. 
And this is a sock sail made by Leach and McBride. Just trying to think of anything else that we haven't covered here. Dagger boards. Dagger boards and rudder blades. Uh, these are not typical. This is about, uh, it's teardrop shape. Needs a little bit of maintenance there, but uh, fairly fine trailing edge and a little more blunt uh, leading edge. This is about a little more than four inches cord. And um, I would say probably 25 or 26 inches long. I'd have to get a tape measure to confirm that. The dagger boards. This dagger board is a, an aluminum extrusion, uh, 36 inches long by I think about five and a quarter inch cord. And it's a half inch thick at its, at its maximum. Uh, these are very nice and fairly reasonably priced, windknife.com. And you have to seal them up. They do not float, do not, do not lose them. Uh, try and tie them to the boat somehow. We filled the slot here with uh, blue styrofoam. Uh, I don't know if you can see that in there. And of course this is glassed in maybe with some Bondo with that short strand glass. Uh, down at the bottom, I don't know if you can show that here. Uh, we typically flip the boats over and insert the boards in. Uh, so the boat would have to be on a sawhorse or something where you could get the boards inserted in. And then, of course, you have to fill in around the uh, the, the dagger board opening. Uh, with the boards protruding through the bottom of the hull, they would have to be uh, covered with some tape, maybe electrician's tape or something that the Bondo or whatever material you're using won't stick to. You'll have to jiggle the boards slightly so that they can be removed before the bondo or, or whatever material you have is set up. Uh, this will facilitate removing them later on after it's fully uh, or partially cured. We use bondo for that and we have to pack a little bit of newspaper uh, in about an inch deep. And you kind of have to force it in. You also want to make sure that your, your alignments are good. Uh, you don't want to have a one board off a little bit or you end up with vibration a bunch of bunch of things happening so um. to get the wind knife boards if you get them uh, in and you want to install them uh, I used a piece of oak down the trailing edge or trailing um, edge of the dagger board trunk and I had a, cut a small kerf using saw to as a guide and it actually works really well because it keeps the trailing edge of the board uh, perfectly aligned uh, so this guide goes from the top of the dagger board trunk all the way to the bottom and it helps to put the uh, wind knife uh, extrusion in place when you're sailing but that fills in the gap and you don't get a bunch of water slopping around inside um, once again, this is not typical, but it's all these modifications on this boat are, are class legal. Um, we do have a set of class rules that are available on the Canadian Sea Spray website. And you can look them up if you are contemplating modifying a boat. This boat, we've added some extra screws so you don't get that uh, walking effect. You know that, you know, one hulls up and the other one's down kind of thing. I had sailed a Hobie 16, we used to do that quite quite a bit. Um, this particular boat uh, doesn't have a bow tube that's tied on here. Okay, this boat this shows a, a two inch irrigation pipe. It's got an extra layer of, of um, pipe inside. This extra layer of pipe only runs about five to six inches inside. For strength and then we've got bolts here and a bolt here and that's adequate for strength and of course you have to um, have to get up here to show you this you have to cut a slot here for the bridle so it's a little bit of a work for to, to change over to this system but um, it's worth it I think because 
you still have uh, you still have your class rule uh, two inch bow bow tube but it stiffens up the forward end of the boat um, this boat also has uh, bolts screws let's see there's three screws here into the tube to prevent that twisting okay You can also through bolt the uh, sleeves uh, that hold the cross beams, the main and the rear beam. Uh, this of course has to be done when the decks are off or if they're accessible. Sometimes a, a hatchway opening or a cover can be uh, used as well to gain access to these tubes. Next video we'll move on to some other items like trailers, launching dollies, that kind of thing.